Hi there, gamer boys and gamer girls. I'm Gamer Sean. Welcome to the latest edition of Almost Gaming. On today's show, Nintendo introduces us to the next era of Sonic, Microsoft has compensation issues, we get a hint about GTA 5 PC, Sony rakes in awards at the game Oscars, and we talk about a very flappy phoenix. Let's go! remember a time when Mario and Sonic were bitter rivals, each one representing a different console maker. Then Sega kind of completely forgot what they were doing, crashed out of the console business, and became a game publisher. Suddenly Mario and Sonic were besties, even competing in the Olympics together. And enough to have Sega and Nintendo sign a three game exclusive deal for the Speedy Blue Hedgehog. The first game in that deal was Sonic Lost World, and the second game was Mario and Sonic at the Winter Olympic Games Sochi 2014. The third game was just announced. The game will be called Sonic Boom and is a tie-in game to a brand new Sonic cartoon on Cartoon Network. The game and the cartoon give Sonic a slight makeover, a new red scarf and some athletic tape. In both, he teams up with quirky inventor type Tails. Brains and Big Hammer, Amy, and the muscle, Knuckles, who gets the biggest makeover because he's now huge. The game will be coming exclusively to Wii U and 3DS and is apparently a prequel to the cartoon. The game will focus on two-player co-op but will allow for as many as four players. The cartoon is set to start airing in fall of 2014, and while we don't have a launch date for the game just yet, it's safe to say it'll likely start around the same time as the cartoon does. Let's toss things over to Microsoft and add another entry to our why Xbox One isn't winning the new generation list. Oddly enough, the Xbox One is a more expensive machine than the PlayStation 4, but it isn't as powerful. One of the most crucial areas where the Xbox One falls short is its use of ES RAM. Gaming Bolt recently did an interview with Rebellion Games senior producer Jean-Baptiste Volcado, who is heading up Sniper Elite 3. Volcado said that the ES RAM in the XB1 is just a bit too small to easily output 1080p graphics, which has been one of the main criticisms of the console. He also says that it's a bit complicated to get the most power out of it at this time. However, he also said that he has been told Microsoft is sending out a new software development kit soon that will help the XB1 output games comfortably at 1080p. It's understandable in a new console generation for it to take time for everybody to learn the new technology. But did Microsoft make a misstep in choosing technology that places it behind the curve early on? Let's take it over to PC Gaming where Rockstar fans are once again getting just a little tease about GTA 5 for the PC. Uber Gizmo points out an interesting series of tweets by Rockstar developer John Diaz. He was asked about GTA 5 for the PC, and while the tweets give off a slight, maybe English isn't the first language vibe, he basically said that the game will be released when it's to the level of quality that they themselves and their fans expect from them. The much more interesting tweet, at least to me, came when somebody asked him about Rockstar making games for Mac machines. He said, do you believe there are some hungry gamers on that platform? I wonder how many Mac users are also GTA fans. As someone using a MacBook, I can confidently state that the Macintosh platform is drastically underserved when it comes to gaming. So while Grand Theft Auto V doesn't exactly thrill me, I would be very excited to see a huge gaming company like Rockstar make a AAA gaming title available on Apple computers. Well, that means it's time for Sony. In Zero Punctuation's review of The Last of Us, Yahtzee said that apparently Naughty Dog felt led to make whatever the gaming equivalent of Oscar bait is. Well, Yahtzee is apparently called Dice Bait. The 17th annual Dice Awards were held the other night by the Academy of Interactive Arts and Sciences. Let's take a look at the big winners. 
The Last of Us basically stole the show, winning nine awards, including Game of the Year. The zombie action-adventure game also took outstanding achievement awards in art direction, animation, character performance for Ellie, sound design, story, visual engineering, and game direction, along with Adventure Game of the Year. In games not named The Last of Us winning awards, Bioshock Infinite took awards for Original Music Composition and Action Game of the Year, Grand Theft Auto V won for Outstanding Gameplay Engineering, Injustice took Fighting Game of the Year, Diablo 3 was the best MMORPG, the XCOM reboot Enemy Within took Strategy Sim of the Year, Plants vs. Zombies 2 won Casual Game and Mobile Game, Super Mario 3D World won Family Game, Forza 5 for Racing Game, FIFA 14 for Sports Game for the fifth year in a row, Brothers A Tale of Two Sons took Downloadable Game, Zelda A Link Between Worlds won Best Handheld, and World of Tanks won Best Online Game. Congratulations to all the winners! For our featured story, we're going to take a look at a sphere of gaming that we don't normally explore here on this show, mobile gaming. While Angry Birds tends to dominate the mobile sphere pretty steadily, sometimes little quick mobile games pop up and catch fire almost randomly. That was the case last May, when a little game called Flappy Bird came out. Flappy Bird was a game on Google Play and iOS, where you would tap the screen to make a small bird fly up and try to navigate him between pipes. The game was updated in January and suddenly exploded racing to the top of the sales charts. But then the game got mired in some controversy. First, it was accused of being excessively and unnecessarily difficult. The controls to make Flappy Bird fly are more than a bit sensitive, making getting even through three gaps in the pipes something of an accomplishment. Then the game was accused of ripping off 8-bit Mario art for its pipes and other parts of the game. Finally, the game's creator, Dong Nugent, was accused of using robots to download copies of the game and artificially inflate its popularity. Well, the heat apparently got too hot for Nugent to stay in the kitchen. He announced on Twitter that he, quote, cannot take it anymore, end quote, and that he was concerned about people overusing his game, and thus that he would be taking it down from both app stores. And indeed, in the next few days, the game disappeared. Phones with the game pre-installed are going for as much as $1,500 on eBay. Nugent says that he's not quitting making games, and most of his prior games are still available for download. Well, that's going to do it for another edition of Almost Gaming. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please help our channel grow, first of all, by subscribing, and that way you get to see Almost Gaming every week. Make sure to click that like button right down below the video, leave us a comment or a question, and share this video with all of your friends that love video games. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate all of you gamers out there that take a little chunk of time out of your day to watch the video gaming news that I put out for you here. Please stay tuned for Extra Lives, the blooper segment, and until next time, game on! Dude. When Nintendo introduces us to the introduces. Is that tasty cardboard squealer? Or older, you might remember a time when Mario and Sonic. I just realized. Should, am I? Suddenly, Mario and Sonic were besties, even going as far as to compete in the Olympics to get a little good with that. The game will be called Sonic Boom and is an official tie-in game for timeout squealers. Sonic Boom and is a tie-in game to a brand new Sonic cartoon coming to Nintendo. Coming. The third game was just announced. The game is called Sonic Boom and is. Uh, the second game was Mario and Sonic at the Winter Olympic Games. Uh, The first game in that deal was Sonic Lost World, and the second game was Mario and Sonic at the Winter Olympic Games, Sochi 2014. The game will be coming exclusively to Wii U and Nintendo 3DS, and something. Why Xbox One isn't winning the new generation. <coughs>
but it's not as powerful. One of the most crucial areas where the, I'm wearing my glasses, let's talk thing, the, which has been one of the main criticisms of the console. Let's take it over to PC gaming where sometimes little quick mobile games pop up and catch fire almost randomly. And I had it too. That's the funny thing. I had it. I just <clears throat> while Angry Birds tends to dominate the dominate dominate <laughs> dominate where you would tap the screen to make a small bird fly up and try to navigate him between pipes. Uh, the game was updated. And finally, the game's creator, Dong Nguyen, was accused of using ham to make a sandwich. You can't use ham to make a sandwich. You've got to use, um, you've got to use roast beef. You've got, if you're going to be a real game creator, you've got to use roast beef and not ham. Or wait, it's Flappy Bird. If you're making a game with a bird in it, you should obviously be using chicken, right? Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all of you gamers in my audience that are watching my show, taking time out of your day to uh, glimpse into the little video game news world that I provide for you. That came off really bad. I'd like it if you'd help my channel grow here. My, I don't want to say my channel. Please click the like button right down. Please kick. Please kick the like button. Kick it. Kick it. It's not enough to click it. Sometimes you've got to kick it. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. You like to move it. That was the case. That, the case. Case. You case. Day harder. My name's Mickey Magoo. I'm another one. I'm the folk that comes out when it's time for the bloopers. Miss Crawford over here, you can't see her. She on pillows, higher in a nap. Yep, yeah, I ain't got a lot to talk about. Nope, nope, nope. I only get to come out when there's bad blooper. Yep. Well, y'all have fun. Listen to Mr. Sean talk about the almost game and stuff. Right, Miss Crawford? She woke up, looked at me a little bit, said, shut up. All right, then. I got to go. But you all listen to the show. Remember to subscribe and do the Facebook and the Twitter and the other stuff and the sharing and the liking the video and the comment. We'll see you next time. Bye.